I'm here. I'm here. Uh -huh. And Snigda, Snigda is supposed to start now that prayer, prayer. Yes. Yes, sir. We'll begin sharp at, uh, 11 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. What is the time now? Yes, another three, four three, minutes. Three, three. Yes, yes. Yes. Oh, if I go, I will not be able to. It will have to be started. I am with uh, director, sir, only. <laughs> okay. Sir, uh, you are not visible. Veda ji, you are not visible. I am with sir. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How can we miss seeing you? So that's why we yeah. request. No, your students yesterday, I was quite amazed to see the leadership qualities among the students. So Thank you, sir. Truly, India of Gandhi's dreams. No, the young people are taking forward to promote Gandhian ideas. Hello, sir. Can you see us, sir? Uh, Matai, sir. Hello, Mathai, sir. Sir, I... Uh... Sir, you have to unmute yourself, sir. Mathai, sir, you have to unmute, unmute sir, yourself. You need to unmute. I think there is some network problem. Uh, I see. So, uh, hello, Mathai, sir. Can you hear us? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So, shall we? No, I'm also. I'm also muting, and I think there are students from Bharati. Haridiyar University and uh, from yes, yes. yes and there are is, uh, scholars and parents have also joined so it is a oh, yeah, yeah. wonderful sir ma'am yeah. that you could motivate the parents to join for this program <laughs> so hopefully <laughs> so I'm unmuting I'm I'm muting myself and stopping the video let us begin sir Another two minutes are left, ma'am. Ah, yes, one minute. Yes. Two minutes, yeah, exactly. Two minutes. Preeti, I think the stu uh, from our side, the students are ready to. Yes, ma'am. Ready for the meet, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Fine. Professor Arsu, hmm. Professor. Okay. Oh. Sir, can we start? It is 11 o'clock. I think so. I... Can we start? Uh, Ma'am, uh, can you give us one minute? Uh, actually, Mr. Pankaj, our technical head, he is uh, having a problem with the videos that Snigda have sent. No, that, uh, that prayer oh. and the patriotic oh. song. Just uh, he's oh. requesting for one to two minutes. Back to okay, sir. We'll wait. No. number number phone
So ma'am we can start please hello good morning all and uh, snig i request nigda to please sir yes ma'am fatima yes fatima you can start please. good morning everyone i seetu lakshmi along with fatima jaden have the pleasure in being the host for the day let us welcome you all to this session in fact of mahatma gandhi on india's freedom struggle as part of the 75th celebration of india's independence conducted by gandhi smriti conducted by gandhi smriti and darshan samit new delhi in association with gandhi and peace and non violence study center st jesus college at bangalore Let us officially, before we start the program, let me take the liberty to request you all to kindly stay on mute. All queries and questions can be raised in the chat box. Thank you. Now, let us officially start the session with invoking the blessings of God. Let me invite Avani to recite the prayer. Mukuman ki shakti de na man vijay kare. से पहले खुद को जय करे हमको मन की शक्ति देना भेदभाव अपने दिल से साफ कर सके दोस्तों से भूल हो तो माफ कर सके झूठ से बचे रहे सच कदम भरे छूट से बजे रहे सच कदम भरे दो सरों की जैसे पहले खुद को जय करे हमको मन की शक्ति दे Thank you, Avani. Now, let me call upon Ms. Nikta Pradeep, Organizing Secretary of Gandhi and Peace and Non-Violence Studies Centre, Saint Teresa's College, to deliver the introductory talk. A very warm welcome to everybody present here today to be a part of this program. It is indeed a great privilege for Saint Teresa's College that Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti, New Delhi. as associated with the Gandhi and Peace and Non-Violence Studies Center of St. Teresa's College an initiative of the Department of English and Center for Research at St. Teresa's to organize this program Impact of Mahatma Gandhi on India's Freedom Struggle as a part of the 75th celebration of India's independence It is an even greater privilege that we have two very eminent personalities Professor M P Matai and Professor R Surendran with us today to address the gathering Dr M P Matai is the adjunct professor 
Gujarat Vidyapeet Ahmedabad, Gujarat. He had served as the principal of St. Peter's College and was the director of School of Gandhian Thought and Development Studies, Mahatma Gandhi University. He was also the Dean of Gandhi Research Foundation, Maharashtra, and the founder president of Gandhi Youth Forum, Kerala. Presently, he's a member of the governing board, Gandhi Peace Foundation, New Delhi, and member of the executive committee, Sarva Seva Sangh. We also have with us Professor R. Surendran, chairperson of the program, visiting professor, chair for Gandhian Studies, University of Calicut. He is a resource person to University Grants Commission, Sahitya Academy, Bharati at Nyanapid, Central Hindi Institute, Central Hindi Directorate, Uttar Pradesh Hindi Sansthan, and Rajasthan Sahitya Academy. We also have with us Mr. Dipanga Srigyan, Director of Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti, New Delhi. He's an officer of Jharkhand Administrative Service who has served the Council of Advancement of People's Action and Rural Technology for five years. He's awarded with the Best Administrative Officer Award and Gandhi Vinobha Peace Award. I extend a hearty welcome to Professor M.P. Matai, Professor R. Surendran, Mr. Dipanga Sri Gyan, members of the Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti, conveners of the program, and to each and every one of you gathered here to be a part of this function. Thank you. Thank you, Smita. Now, I invite Mr. Dipanka Shrikyan, Director, Kanti Smriti and Darshan Samiti, to kindly deliver his address and welcome the gathering. Sir, please. Good everybody. Honorable Mr. Mathai, the eminent scholar in the country on Ghanaian thoughts and Ghanaian philosophy. My friend, Professor R. Sudarshan, and eminent person working in the field of Mahatma Gandhi activities in Southern India, particularly for advancement of Hindi in the Southern States. All the distinguished guests present here in this webinar. I feel privileged to welcome all of you on this auspicious occasion of when we are going to celebrate Ajadika Amrit Mahasa in coming 10 days. The Honorable Prime Minister of India, while initiating the Ajadika Amrit Mahasa on 12th of March this year at Savarmati Asan, has motivated the country that we should remember the contribution of all the freedom fighters for the independent India. Being the Ghanaian institution, our duty was to highlight the achievements of everybody who has contributed for freedom of our nation. Mahatma Gandhi happens to be one and only pioneer in this field, and he has the highest impact on the whole system of our struggle for freedom. I always go back when I talk about what this independent means to us. Most of the historian contribute and say that our independence men struggle started in 1857 with Sepahir Mutiny. But I am going a little bit ahead. Why it happened? How it happened? When they were ruled by the Britishers, the higher race. They are the most advanced race of the world because they have the most advanced technology for the town planning. They have the most advanced education system. They have the most advanced technical system. But during 1855, when Harappa and Mohan Janadara was excavated. The whole myth changed. No, you are not the superior one or the pioneer one who has done it for the first time. It is right from the Indian culture in the pre vedic history that we are more advanced than you. And that I call a reincarnation for the Indian psychology. And that's the reason that 
our intellectual at that time started struggling for the freedom. So the initial period of whole freedom struggle is dominated by the intellect of the country. Either it is that by Naraji, Balgangar Tilak, Lokman, or anybody else who were fighting for that. And even that just to control them, the Indian National Congress was formed by the Britishers. And at the same time, the Britishers were doing some exploitation of our natural resources, which were predominantly in the Kurds, which were totally inhabited by the Adivasis. So we find that there was an Adivasi uprising during 1855 onwards. And that it started and it continues for next 50 years that the whole freedom struggle was commanded by the intellectual. Unfortunately, during those times, we have a very low uh, quality of uh, those leadership who were just the public leaders. They were the intellectual leaders, no doubt, but their following in the uh, masses were low. No doubt, Tilak tried a lot through the uh, Ganesh Puja and so that uh, to involve the people of the freedom struggle, but it was a little. Then came Gandhi. He has some experiment and during that experiment, it was proved that he has the potential of involving the masses in this struggle. And with that, when his political guru asked him to first understand the country, he visited the country and he has a long tour of India understanding the social condition of India, economical condition of India, the system of India, and even the cultural heritage of India. And that Gandhi was really prepared for a struggle. He was searching for a field where he can establish himself as a mass leader. And that was the mass leader who brought him to Shambhavan. Here Gandhi experimented everything for freedom of struggle. He involved masses, and he was aware that for involving the masses, he must do some constructive work. So what he did, he started education, what we call Naitali. He started Swakshita. He started participation of women in the struggle. And then the struggle became more strengthened by people participation. And this he experimented throughout his life. In the latter phase, then he felt that there is some and finally, it's the 40 years of Mahatma Gandhi life is totally the life which we call the freedom struggle, the real freedom struggle life is of India. And the and he has lot of impact on the whole freedom struggle. Even today, his impacts are apparent. When we talk about our constitution, which is our the guiding book for us, it is our most holy document. Mahatma Gandhi was never in a direct contact with making of Indian constitution. But what is his impact? He was always fighting for the duty based society. So we are having the fundamental duties in our constitution. He was right from South Africa to India, he was always fighting for right to equality, right to equal opportunity. That are our fundamental rights. And what he was thinking in his Sapno Ka Bharat preservation of our culture, heritage, and everything. That is directly principle of the state policy. So Mahatma Gandhi impact is still, we can feel it. And it will be there till India is free country, till our constitution guides us. So for me, Gandhi is the one and only motivating factor in pre-independent period of country and even in the post independent era. Thank you.
you, sir. May I now invite Fiza Jahangi and to instill in us a patriotic, patriotic song. Thank you, President Arjuna. Now let's move on to our main agenda. With that most pleasure, I welcome Professor B. Matai, Adjunct Professor Gujarat Vidyapeet, Ahmedabad, Gujarat, to deliver the keynote address. So, would you please? Uh, thank you, friends. Am I audible? Yes, sir. No. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, uh, friends, uh, at the outset, to thank uh, the Gandhi Smriti Darshan for organizing this program and also for inviting me to deliver the keynote address. We know that the talk is organized in connection with the events of the 75th anniversary of Indian independence. And therefore, it is quite appropriate that the host uh, for today's talk is impact on Indian freedom struggle. Students of uh, Indian history know, although Gandhi was the pivotal figure uh, in India's freedom struggle, his role in it was sometimes uh, and somehow steeped in controversy. It's interesting to note 
that though Gandhi's life was extremely transparent, transparent as humanly possible, and his life be an open book and made no distinction whatever between life and public life, his life was caught controversies. Ironically, every intervention he made in public life, South Africa and in India, generated some controversy. So it's not my purpose in this talk to survey the controversies around his in the struggle, but I mention it to offer uh, a kind of a friendly warning uh, that my of Gandhi's role in India's freedom struggle also might generate some lighter controversy. Friends, <clears throat> right at the beginning, I would like to assert that what really happened under leadership in India from 19 to 1947, famous Champaran Satyagraha in Bihar, to transfer of power on August 14th midnight was not just a struggle for political liberation combination, but a movement and by the Indian pe people for their national identity and their lowest self-confidence and self-esteem and for establishing Swaraj. So, it is more appropriate to characterize the so-called Indian struggle, Indian national movement. The Indian struggle, so-called, was qualitatively different from the political liberation struggles in other parts of the world, and was unique in several ways, particularly its nonviolent nature. It has been acknowledged that in history and in no other country had non violence been used as a method in a liberation struggle in India under Gandhi's leadership. Another reason why I characterize the freedom struggle as Indian national movement is its in nature. The liberations of erstwhile European colonies were one dimensional. They were made totally political. But the movement led by Gandhi was multi dimensional. Of course, its immediate goal was political liberation. It was an integral revolution aimed at the all round liberation and transformation of Indian society, its social, economic, political, and orders. Along with Satyagraha, that is Gandhi's most uh, original and lasting contribution to the political discourse and method, Gandhi also developed a set of programs called the Constructive Program to rebuild from below with people's voluntary participation. Gandhi's Constructive Program marked a shift in the content and direction the liberation movement should take by how a new nation, if struggling to liberate itself from foreign domination, evolve an integral development package tuned with its ethos and genius and apply it. These are in brief rationale why I characterize the freedom struggle national movement. We know that the first thing that he did on his return from South Africa to East in 1915 was to extensively in India, South and North, East and West. <clears throat> Exploration and during discovered through India. Among other things, he also saw the depth of the misery in the people of the country had been pushed down by the colonial powers. In the midst of such a 
misery and deprivation, he also discovered the soul of India and the ethos of its culture, still living and vibrant. We that the country was geographically fragmented into princely states, and most of the rulers were the enemies of one another. The Indian subcontinent had been noted for its immense diversity, ethnic, linguistic, religious, and so on, prompting historians to characterize even as the epitome of the world. But the British colonial powers, following the policy of divide and rule, used Indian diversity as a ploy to divide people, portraying each group as a threat to the other, thus pitting one against the other. Reserves. Thus, India was divided vertically and horizontally, geographically, socially, culturally. It was Gandhi's leader who really knit India into a nation. He achieved it by uniting the people who had themselves in the name of religion, language, ethnicity, etc., by giving them a shared vision and a common goal, Swaraj. He was himself convinced and convinced the people of India that the reason for their subjugation was pity, and that a divided people would never be able to fight the mighty colonial Britain, nor win Swaraj. So he exhorted them to sing their differences together. He reminded them that the bonds that unite them were stronger than differences that divide them. I would repeat, he, remi he reminded the people of India that the bonds that unite them are stronger than the differences that divide them. People trusted, accepted his arguments, and followed his action. Thus, he inculcated in the mind of the people the idea of an inclusive nation and elevated pluralism as a national ideal. That was undoubtedly one of the greatest contributions of Gandhi, not only to the struggle, but to the whole nation all times to come. Gandhi's work was done mainly through the Indian National Congress. When Gandhi joined the Congress, it was a club of the educated elites. Sorry to remember <clears throat> that during the early decades of its exception, the Indian National Congress was a petitioning organization, pleading before force that be for favors and reforms. Gandhi, who transformed the Congress into a mass based organization by admitting students, workers, artisans, and women as workers. Units were organized at the village and social levels, and it was ensured that things were conducted in the language of the region, which facilitated larger participation by the members. Gandhi also put the Congress in charge of his constructive program, like communal harmony and uh, and propagation of Khadi and village industries, retouchability, prohibition, etc., and thus made them active participants in reforms and nation building. Also prompted the Pradesh Congress committees to start journals and newspapers in regional languages to propagate the ideals and the of the national movement. You know, in Kerala, we know that the mother newspaper was started at the behest of Gandhi. Gradually, under Gandhi's leadership, Congress evolved into a fighting organization capable of organizing nationwide non-cooperation 
and civil disobedience and finally asking the British to quit. Yeah. What is equally significant is that he used the Congress as a means for uniting the and the regions of this diverse, thus precursing the future Indian Gandhi also Congress into an open forum for and debates. National policy and important issues relating to the emerging nation were freely and frankly discussed in its sessions. In fact, it was the Congress, with Gandhi as its leader, that educated the leaders and the of India on the fundamentals of inclusivism, democracy, secularism, socialism, etc. Thus emerged what today called the idea of India. You know, the great bard of England, Shakespeare said, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and greatness thrust upon them. And this is in Twelfth Night. The same is applicable to leaders as well. It is said that great leaders are born leaders. History has taught us that this is only true. Many <clears throat> great leaders were trained and shaped. Gandhi their gift of identifying leaders, referring to his great to groom leaders, it has been said of Gandhi that he made heroes out of clay. Look at the great and glittering galaxy he trained and gave in through the national movement. Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Patel, C. Rajagobal Ajayi, J.B. Kripalani, Rajendra Prasad, Saroji, Kamla Devi, Adoba Thiyaya, Sarela Ben, Nya Ben, Maulana Abul Kalam Asad, Takhtain, Vinoba Bhave, Dikrash and <clears throat> Jesse Kumarapa, you know, the list could be easily and justifiably extended, which includes not only politicians, but social writers, educationists, artists, and institution builders. This is undoubtedly another great contribution of Mahatma to the free movement as well as to the nation. A great many things may be said about Gandhi's contribution to impact on Indian national movement. I will limit myself mentioning only one or two more here. We have paucity of time. And I also have to participate in a national consultation. Attend, therefore, I may be permitted to leave, you know, before the whole procedure is complete. Uh, I, would, I would request you to be indulgent to me in this. So I will invite your attention to Bismarck's famous statement or remark that politics is the possible, the attainable, the art, the next best. You know, Bismarck remarked, politics is the art of the possible, the, at the art of the next best. Obviously, it is a diluted restatement of and pragmatism in politics. It suggests that it is impossible to uphold ideals in politics. People make a distinction between idealist or principled politics, what we call real politics. Do real politics resort to any means to their goals, for they believe that the end defies the means. Entirely different position. He considered politics as moral action, 
moral act and therefore insisted on the purity of and argued that the means are important as the goal in fact he did not make any distinction between me then and gave us a new dictum particular discourse a new dictum as the means and he knew that the age in which he then worked was the age of politics when politics and circled the people like the coils of a snake this is gandhi's phrase like the coils of a snake politics and like the coils of a snake from which one could get out so politics was the central plane of action of the times and therefore service to fellow human beings could be accomplished by engaging in politics he knew only too well that political institution he generated into institutions of corruption nepotism and coercion as there was no escape from politics he was to cleanse politics of its maladies and not run away from it like escapists or purists the right way and the only way to do this according to he was to moralize and spiritualize politics what he meant by this was to the materialistic values of competition and self-aggrandizement rampant in politics with altruistic moral values and to the extent of saying that in politics also we have to seek and establish the kingdom of rama rajya the anti wanted to make politics the art of the best and not the art of the next best bismarck would have it finally gandhi through his life and work exempt how to be a true leader which him meant to be a true servant people and that was gandhi's favorite imagery to be a true leader is to be a true of the people for him people were the masters, the real masters and the people was the voice of god you know we have the famous saying vox populi vox dei so karl jaspers one of the leading existential philosophers of modern times Christ, socrates the buddha and jesus and jesus as paradigmatic individuals paradigmatic individuals same manner i think it would be appropriate to call gandhi a paradigmatic leader gandhi was a paradigmatic leader because he identified himself with the people whom he served through empathy he was a man of truth maintained transparency in thought word he he was an integrated personality in whom there was no dichotomy between thought word and action also he had achieved the triple harmony essential for a great leader intrapersonal interpersonal and cosmic the set an example for those who want to be still and political activists look at the simplicity he maintained in his life and his total renunciation of worldly ambitions and possessions these are qualities essential for an exemplary leader we know that serious who write on leadership today have identified as dramatic leader it may be news to at least some of you that some of the leading businesses of the world including the harvard business have included gandhi gandhi leadership in their courses of study in the opportunity when i was in jalgaon was the dean 
of Gandhi Research Hall, meeting the faculty of the Harvard Business School every day when I was there. And they used to come and study and Gandhian leadership. And they also used to visit institutions to see how Gandhi led these institutions. I would like to conclude by saying that though the role of Gandhi in national movement was central and unique, and he was an undisputed leader. He took to the core. Never imposed <clears throat> his ideas either on on public individuals or on organizations. He was prepared to do this whenever he considered them essential in public and national interest. You see the position he took when the Congress Working Committee ceded to the participation of India. Uh, what Gandhi, how Gandhi took when he said that the Indian national flag should have in the middle was rejected. And the Ashoka Chakra, a suggestion of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was in, in incorporated. He did not protest because he knew that at that particular juncture, it was proceed to the majority decision than to try to impose one's own decision. This is what is meant by Gandhi compromise. Thus, he set an effort for the democratic processes, set a legacy behind for the coming generations and from <clears throat> and to follow. Let us read this gentle message. My life is my message. Thank you for your uh, patient listening very much. Uh, and I would uh, request you to be indulgent to let me leave this uh, meeting after a few minutes because I have another conference at 12 o'clock, from 12 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, sir. As sir has to leave for another event, I request the audience to clear all their queries and doubts, if they have any, through the chat box. Namaste, sir. Sir, I'm Max Lin, and I'm a third year student here. Sir, in your keynote address, you mentioned about how Gandhiji was an undisputed leader and how that led our country to independence. So what do you think the qualities that our present day leaders lack, the qualities that we lack, the modern day leaders, be it in the bureaucracy or, our stud or the modern day students? What do you think are those that we need to learn those qualities or to acquire. Well, that's a wonderful, at least coming from a uh, representative of the younger student community. You know, there is an expression in English, conspicuous by its absence. Qualities that we seek in a leader are conspicuous by their absence in most of the leaders of the present, present times. You know, look at Gandhi, not the leaders, the galaxy of leaders, some of whom I mentioned, all epitomes of the positive qualities of leadership. And you must know that during Gandhi's time, there were Gandhis all over India, even in rural India, we used to characterize people as local Gandhis. Kerala had Kerala Gandhi called Kerapan. Even in villages, we used to characterize, uh, you know, people who lived simply, uh, or, I mean, who were uh, who were people of integrity, with, uh, uh, with renunciation. You know, then we called uh, such people Gandhi. So we had a, a Gandhi, we had a Kerala Gandhi, we had village Gandhi, because you know these qualities at the time were infectious. Today, what has happened is that, you know, we have a tendency to imbibe, to internalize, and to follow what you see extensively practiced in society, in the country. And today we have seen that after the British, you know, the next generation leaders, after the first generation who wanted to follow the pomp and glory of the colonial past. And so, 
they are pensioners they have no integrity they don't simplicity except in their words they have no high ideals they don't empathize with the people you look at the poor the poorest of the people the deprived people of the and look at the way the rulers of this country live so they live even far in much more grandiose manner than the greatest emperors of the world live so this is the difference and the possible way to change this situation is that demand should come from the side the constituency of the growing generation they must learn about paradigmatic leaders you take any great whom we respect uh, in history like from i mentioned the names of these people you know like socrates the buddha all these people jesus you know they were practicing non possession or abhigraha not a mass well they did not live in luxury there were people who achieved the triple uh, you know kind of harmony in their so it's those people whom we should uh, accept as models as exemplars and not these puny little uh, mediocre people who that material aggrandizement and fame, fame and luxury uh, and the practice of evaded with it is the mark of greatness you know such people we find only in the dustbin of history and not in the memories the collective memories of civilizations and cultures thank you thank you so much sir for your valuable presence and words your words have surely inspired us and they will take us a long way thank you so much thank you very much bye thank you sir now i request dr preeti kumar coordinator of kandian peace a non violent studies center st jesus college to kindly take over and take us through the relevance of celebrating azadi ka utsav ma'am please Good morning, everyone. And it is a privilege for me to speak on the relevance of Azadi ki Amrit Mahotsav that we celebrate this year. Now, as we embark on this year-long celebration of the 75th year of independence, it is time for us to reflect on the significance of this elaborate celebration, this elaborate commemoration. Why is it so crucial that we should memorialize this moment? i believe that it is because we can learn from our path to independence we can learn from what has happened since independence and during the time of independence and we can learn at least three things from it now first we know that our prime minister has envisioned the idea of an atmanirbhar bharat a self reliant india to those of us who look to china and countries in the west it might seem like a utopian ideal how can we do that it is then that we must remember the path that our country has traversed since independence india in 1947 was an impoverished unindustrialized debt ridden famine stricken nation we are now the sixth largest economy we were the fifth largest economy we would have uh, improved had it not been for corona we are now the sixth largest economy in the world we have achieved tremendous progress in all fields whether it is agriculture whether it is food self sufficiency we had the green revolution the white revolution uh, whether it is literacy space research energy telecommunications all these strides one should give us the confidence that it is not a dream that we can become a self reliant india secondly celebrating these years of independence is vital to this generation this generation of young people a generation that is completely removed from the freedom movement in the sense that you do not even meet anyone with the first hand knowledge of the years of the freedom struggle those of my generation had had our fathers and our grandfathers who had lived through those years it is significant that you must reflect on the numerous great souls that actually gifted us our independence Matai sir enumerated many names: Mahatma Gandhi, Sardar Patel, Jawaharlal Nehru, Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad, uh, Chandra Shekhar Azad, uh, Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan. So many people, so many people 
who sacrificed their careers, their comfort, they suffered the privations of jail, they gave up their lives for agitation and struggle. Along with these very revered names, names that we have read about in textbooks, let us also remember millions of ordinary men and women, unsung heroes who had no position or power. They don't figure in our history books. They have disappeared into the annals of time. These were men and women who bore the tortures of the prison cell. Many of them had to hang with their hands tied up above their heads. There, there have been cases in Kalapani of people who were tied to oil mills, forced to turn the oil mill like they were bullocks, kept in solitary confinement for years. Solitary confinement sends people insane, dying without ever seeing their families again, all for this freedom of a nation and the freedom that we enjoy today. So when we celebrate our independence, let us remember them in the words of our war poet. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave up our today. That is the message the celebration must give our young generation. The independence that we take for granted was won on the blood, sweat and toil of many ordinary men and women like us. And finally, this is a moment for us to remember the man who inspired these millions, the person who we affectionately called Bapu. I don't know if the young generation calls him that now. When we were young, that was the name we were taught, Bapu. We have made him a saint. We have relegated him to our textbooks. But what we failed to show our young generation, what we of the older generation have failed to show you is that along with being principled, he followed the ideals of truth, of nonviolence, of integrity. He was also a very pragmatic visionary. He acted and spoke on many issues which have proven crucial to mankind in this century. He spoke about social and economic modernization, importance of the village economy, sustenance of local industry, the local artisans, the importance of bringing women into public life. He was the first person who brought women into the forefront. Environmental challenges, environmental changes and challenges, the role and nature of religion, inclusiveness, nutritional health care, sanitation, any subject worthy of thinking about, he thought about and he acted on. Much of what he said has been adopted by many institutions and governments across the world. That is the first. Then, as a political leader of a colonized country, he recognized strength in numbers. There have been many debates of the efficacy of his practices, but there is one indisputable fact, something that uh, Sri Dipankar and Matai sir said, mentioned in their talk. He converted the freedom struggle from an elite club to a mass movement. And in that struggle, what he did was he used the armaments that every man or woman would have. Strength of conviction and the spirit of sacrifice. That is something that is there in all of us. That he recognized. That is what he harnessed. That is the greatest lesson that we individual men and women have in public life. He said, if you are convinced of the rightness of your cause, then be prepared to stand up for it and take the punishment that comes with it. In the long run, you will win. He said, all through history, there have been oppressors and tyrants. For a time, they seem invincible, but at the end, they always fall. Think of it, always. And therefore, today, if we learn a lesson, learn that lesson, pick up a cause that is worthy, with integrity, stand up for it and stand up for your fellow human beings. As we celebrate these 75 years of independence, I pray that the Mahatma might continue to inspire us and inspire generations of young people. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you so much, Preeti ma'am. So in connection with the celebration of 75th anniversary of India's independence, we conducted a special competition where the participants were asked to create a medley of four songs in different Indian languages on the freedom, Indian freedom movement or on Indian freedom fighters. Price money for the same was 2000 rupees. We had invented entries across the state and they were judged by one of our faculty members. 
So the lucky winner of this competition was Rishan M. Shiraz, a second year student in Government Homeopathic Medical College, Calicut. Now let's get to know more about him through this small video. Hi all, I'm Rishan, Rishan M. Shiraz. I'm a second year medical student in Government Homeopathic Medical College, Calicut. I had so much fun mixing up all these soulful patriotic songs for this innovative medley competition. I've used songs of all three languages, Malalam, Hindi, and Tamil. In the medley, I started off with the dazzling beginning portion from the recent Hindi song, Teri Mitty, from the movie Kesari. Then I moved on to the soothing song, Tamara Tamara, from the movie Roja. Then it is followed up by uh, one of the most emotional songs about soldiers, that is Sandesha Ateha. Then I continued up with Teri Mitty for a little bit. Then again moved on to the dynamic part of the uplifting song, Bharat Hamko. It is then continued by our evergreen Malaram patriotic song, Bharata Mandan. Then I ended up the medley on a high beat with one of the best creations of Maestro Air of Mansa, that is Maa Tujay Salam. A big salute to all the real heroes of our nation and a hearty thanks to all the people who are behind this great event. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Thank you all. So that was Rashan. Now let us take a look into his winning medley of patriotic songs. Talwaron pe sarwar diye, angaron me jism jalaya hai, tab ja ke kahi humne sar pe ye kesri rang saja.
It was brilliant. It was actually melodious and beautiful indeed. So now <laughs> moving on, we have Ms. Nigda Pradeep to deliver her speech on the impact of Gandhiji in South India. Nigda, Am I audible? Please. Yes. 75 years ago, on a midnight, our forefathers sat together in pride with their heads held high, finally setting forth to celebrate their independence. They were liberated from a truly greater nation to build and create an independent nation that was even greater. But let me ask you this, my friends. Would that day have come if in 1863, on 2nd of October, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was not born to this country? To me and to all of us here, he's the father of our nation. But most importantly, he was the pillar, the driving force and the charisma behind India's freedom. Today, I would like to take a little bit of your time to talk about something different. We all know what his dreams were and what he did for our country. But what do you know about the impact that he created on the place we're all from in the south of India. Let me start off with Gandhiji's impact on the Tamil psyche. In 1921, when he was in Madurai, he traded his simple attire of kurta and dhoti for a more frugal loincloth made of barely a yard of cloth. This earned him the title, the half-naked fakir. Now, this had a special symbolism in Madurai. Madurai was the land of the great poet Manikavasagar, who described Lord Shiva as the lord of the beggars. Hence Gandhiji, adopting the attire of a mendicant as a representative of the poorest in India, transformed Madurai into a major center of Gandhian activism. Gandhiji is in fact the first one who used the term Harijan, or children of God to describe the Dalits. The Vaikam Satyagraha, one of the greatest agitations of the South for liberation against untouchability and ban on the use of public roads by Dalits, followed Gandhiji's methodology of protest through non-violence, fasting and courting arrest. A series of atrocities committed on the Satyagrahis even brought him to the site of the struggle. Gandhiji used his influences to persuade the government to end the brutality against the Satyagrahis and to withdraw the prohibitory orders on the use of public roads by Dalits. His attempts were successful and as a result of this, the Satyagraha was withdrawn. The Temple Entry Bill, which made it legally possible for the lower castes to enter the temples in British India, was crafted by C. Raja Gopalachari, who himself was a follower of Gandhiji. On his visit to Devakotai to address public meetings in support of the upliftment of Dalits, he ended up brokering peace between Nutters, the ruling class, and Dalits. On learning that Nutters held sway over Dalits and denied them temple entry, he held talks with them and urged them to do justice to the Harijans and treat them kindly as brothers. During this visit, he also laid the foundation for a school for the Harijans in Ramnagar. Gandhiji coined the term Gram Swarajya, the idea of villages as decentralized, self-sufficient governing units with the freedom of deciding their own affairs, which offers a cure for many of the ills of the present political system. And this indeed had a huge impact on South India. A rural community called Gandhigram to revive village industries and provide livelihood to people from backward communities was set up near the town of Dindigul by G. Ramachandran, who was a Dalit Gandhian. Campus and college, Gandhi Gram Rural Institute in Tamil Nadu, was built on the lands donated by Zamindars who viewed Gandhiji as an avatar of Hindu gods. His impact on South India was so strong that in no time it turned into an important center of anti-untouchability movements. Gandhiji taught us that one cannot remain idealistic every time just to please everyone. To lead a normal life is easy, but to be able to influence people 
and to leave a footprint everywhere you go is not so easy. And this, my friends, is exactly what Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi has been able to achieve. Thank you and Jai Hind. Thank you, Snigda, for that wonderful speech. Next up, we have Maxlin M. Maxim, the student wing member of Gandhian Peace and non Mining mm -hmm. Studies Center, Central CIS, to talk about the relevance of Satyagraha, Satyagraha with a special reference to Kevin. Maxlin. Thank you, Jebin. Uh, good morning, everyone. We can speak volumes about the influence of Gandhiji on each one of us and to the world. His contribution and participation in many of the satyagrahas and liberation movements helped to uplift the oppressed masses from the stinking morass of misery and pain. He has played a very significant role in one of the South Indian movements that we all know, the Vaikam Satyagraha. Vaikam Satyagraha started as a regional localized protest against untouchability. The heart of this protest was at the Vaikam Mahadeva temple where the upper caste was permitted to use a public road around it but the others were not. Kerala during the 19th century was steeped in the irrational taboos of the caste system and the odious practice of untouchability confined certain sections of populations in constricted spheres. The restriction was severe. It is said that Srinarayana Guru and Ayin Kali were stopped on the road by fanatics and asked to take a longer route. The agitators felt that the issue would gain prominence if Congress could be persuaded to lead the rebellion and if Gandhiji could be convinced of the urgency of the situation. Then the Mahatma lent support for the program for eradicating untouchability. In accordance with Gandhiji's suggestion, the Savarnas took out a procession to the capital under the leadership of Manith Padmanabhan, the leader of Nair Service Society, to offer solidarity to the movement. Maharani of Travancore suggested that the matter should be settled in the legislature. It was moved in the legislature by SNDP Yogam, but was defeated by 22 votes against 21. The Satyagrahis were set aback by the defeat. A series of atrocities were committed on them, which eventually brought Gandhiji to Vaikam. He negotiated with the leaders of the conservative forces, but didn't yield any positive results. He then wrote to W.H. Pitt, the police commissioner of Travancore, to end the brutality against Satyagrahis and use his influence to persuade the government to withdraw the prohibitory orders. As a result of the strenuous efforts, the government let the roads on the three sides of the temple open for the public while reserving the eastern approach road exclusively to the Savarnas. The Satyagraha was thus withdrawn. The Vaikam Satyagraha was a testing ground for the Gandhian principles of Satyagraha. Satyagraha, or holding firmly to truth or truth force, is a particular form of non-violent resistance. Non-violence forms the basis of Satyagraha, a method which was employed by Gandhiji to reap the desired outcome continues to embolden justice and peace seekers far and near. If we are to trace the underlying principle of many social movements around the world, we notice that they have drawn inspiration from the Gandhian way of conflict resolution. He could morally lead and tether their aim on the ground with the right rope, truth. What could have happened if Gandhiji was not present on the scene? Justice and equality could have been distant and Satyagrahis could have been seriously afflicted by the caste hegemony. Leaders of the movement could also have resorted to a violent and aggressive mode and the efforts might have been futile and worthless. But today, Vaikam Satyagraha remains glorious in the history of South India for accomplishing its prime objectives. The philosophy of Satyagraha is the moral alternative to war. Many of the contemporary challenges that we face today related to war, peace, terrorism, human rights, climate change, environmental problems, sustainable development, socio-political unrest could be faced through the adoption of Gandhian way. We, the younger generation, should shoulder the responsibility of entrenching the Gandhian philosophy on the soil and to employ the supreme idea of satya and non-violence to seek tranquility in face of dispute. 
Thank you, everyone, and Jai Hind. Thank you for that speech, Max Lin. Let us now call upon yet another dignitary, Professor R. Surendran, chairperson of the program and visiting professor, chair for Grandian Studies, University of Calicut. I welcome you, sir, to deliver your address. Okay. Due to some network issues, sir has sent us a recorded video. Now I request Pankit, sir, to please play the recorded video. Well, uh, I was just told by our director, sir, that I think he has joined. We don't know whether he is, uh, can uh, we spot him in case if he has not, if he has joined, then it would be wonderful to listen to him live. Otherwise, we play the uh, video. So, uh, uh, Professor Arsu, please, can you hear us? Okay, I think he's not there, so uh, my colleague, Mr. Pankaj, is going to share now. Yeah. No, this is not good. Namaskar. GSDSK Patadikari Shri Dibangar Shri Gyan, Veda Vyasi, Professor Matai, Shri Maxilin, Snigda Pradeep, Preeti Kumar and dear students and teachers of St. Thera's College. Independence Day greetings to all. This is an auspicious occasion for all of us. We are celebrating the Amrita Mahotsava of our independence. Let us pay homage to all the patriots who had dedicated their precious lives for the cause of uh, the freedom of the nation. We had endured this, uh, we had endured slavery imposed by the British imperialists for a period of two centuries. We have to bear in mind that our freedom is the outcome of the sacrifices of the umpteen patriots in different parts of India. The theme preferred for this webinar is the impact of Mahatma Gandhi on India's freedom struggle. Gandhiji had returned from South Africa to India in 1915. Thereafter, he had actively participated and involved in the freedom struggle. Gokhale had advised him to visit the remote villages of India to know the pulse and aspirations of the people of different parts of India. This Shishya was obeying this advice in letter and spirit. Gandhiji traveled throughout length and breadth of the nation. He understood He understood the variety of India related to the caste, color, creed, region, religion, geography, and language. He made an action plan to ignite and inspire the minds of the common man. <coughs> Gandhiji could intensify Sadharanka Asadharanath in many fields. He was channelizing the energy of the common man in different part, different phases of the national movement. The Champaran Satyagraha, non-cooperation movement, Salt Mars and Kit India movement, all these are the excellent examples of, his, of this concept. He advocated Sarva Dharma Samabhava throughout his life. The dictum, Ishwarala Theravanam, was digestive for the common man. For Gandhiji, Satya was God. God is truth was the prevailing belief. Gandhiji made it upside down and uh, as truth is God. Truth and non-violence were weapons for him. Ahimsa Paramodharma was his cardinal principle. Gandhiji emphasized uh, one principle. If, you, uh, if your means are not pure, then your ends also cannot become pure. Sadhya or Sadhan relationship was focused by Gandhiji. He realized that the soul of India lies in the villages. The empowerment of the villagers was the thrust of development so far as Gandhiji was concerned. He had advocated cottage industries for the upliftment of the villagers. Emancipation from the political bondage as well as the social evils were given equal significance by Gandhiji. Education should create national and social awakening. Higher education and uh, higher civic sense should go hand in hand. That was the clarion call of Gandhiji. Decentralization of powers through Gram Panchayat, prohibition, naturopathy, way of treatment, 
all these were mooted by Gan Gandhiji. All these uh, uh, ideas are vital even today. Temple entry was banned to the outcasts in those days. Gandhiji fought for the upliftment of the marginalized. He became the voice of the voiceless. He had involved in Vaikam Satyagraha and Guruvayur Satyagraha held in Kerala. That movement had created new ripples in the socio-political scenario of Kerala. His conversation with Sri Narayana Guru in 1925 was a turning point. Gandhiji got new insights from this dialogue. Later, he had met Iyengali, the leader of the outcasts in Kerala. Gandhiji had supported his cause. Many South Indian leaders became staunch supporters and followers of Mahatma Gandhi. See Rajagopalajari, Satyamurthy, Kamaraj, Anjaneya Sharma and Moturi Satyanarayana were the closest disciples of Gandhiji uh, from South India. Staunch disciples from Kerala included K. Kalapan, K. P. Keshwa Menon, A. V. Kutimaduama, Mohammed Abdurrahman, E. Moida Mavilevi and others. Gandhiji had mentioned the names of two Keralites in his autobiography. They were Barrister A.K. Pillai and uh, V. Kaumudi. The autobiography of Gandhiji was translated into Malayalam when he was alive. Madhra Bhumi Printing Press had published uh, this uh, significant book. The translator was K. Madhavanar. Gandhian works are now being published by Purnodaya from Kochi. Gandhiji had visited Kerala five times. Many writers had the privilege to get the blessings and benedictions of Gandhiji during these visits. The first visit was on 18th August 1920. Prominent, prominent, uh, prominent uh, uh, leaders and writers who became, the, uh, who became the disciples of Gandhi and got the blessings of Gandhi include Vallathol Narayana Menon, Pala Narayanan Nair, and Bala Maniyama, Lelithambika, Antarjanam, Kainikara Kumara Pillai, Vaikam Muhammad Bashir, and Vennikulam Gopala Kurupa. The, uh, in the field of uh, constructive programs, Gandhiji had so many followers in Kerala. They were Thiruvatra Damodarji, V. Kaumudi, K. R. Radhakrishna Menon, P. P. Umar Koya, E. Moidu Mailavi, and Gobi Nathan Nair. Dekshin Bharat Hindi Prajar Sabha was established by Gandhiji in 1980 at Madras. Many youngsters came forward to learn Hindi. Prominent Keralites among them were Dev Keraliya, P. Narayan, P. Raghavan, Govindan Nambishan, Abhaya Dev, E. K. Divagaran Poti, V. A. Keshavan Nambodri, and Sri Menon. Gandhiji had visited three colleges in Kerala. University College of Trivandrum, UC College of Alway, and Malabar Christian College uh, were these institutions. Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Mahatma Gandhi University is functioning in the district of Kotte. This university is offering a course in Gandhian Studies. Chair for Gandhian Studies and Research is functioning in University of Calicut. Gandhi Peace Foundation. Gandhi Smarakanidhi, Mahatma Mandir are the leading organizations functioning in Kerala. Many libraries were established in the names in the villages to honor the honor Mahatmaji and his ideals. A part of the ashes of Mahatma Gandhi was immersed in Nila River of Kerala on 12th February 1949 under the leadership of Sri K. Kalapan. Annual meet of Sarvodaya workers is being held on the shore of Nila River, located in Tirunavaya district of Malapuram every year. The need of the hour is to empower the youth in the Gandhian path. Gandhiji Majburi ka naam nahi, Gandhiji Majbuti ka naam hai. Gandhian ideology is helpful for energizing the youth and not for weakening their spirit. The Buddhist generation will, will get new inspiration from the Gandhian ideals. Let us move in this path with confidence and determination. Thank you all. Thank you so much, sir, for your informative words.
No program is complete without expressing gratitude. We have Chitra with us to deliver the vote of thanks. Hello, can I call you? Yes, Honorable Director, Honorable Director, uh, Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samiti, Mr. Dipankar Shri Gai, Most Respected Professor Indi Matai, Professor R. Surendran, Mr. Vedatya Sundu, and our attended participants. On behalf of Gandhi and Peace and Non Violent Studies Center, St. Christmas College, Ernakuli, I express my heartfelt gratitude to all the eminent speakers of Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samashi, Professor M. P. Matai, Mr. Dipakar Shrigai, and Professor R. Surendran for sharing their graceful and enlightening words with us. As Dipakar Sir said, Satnoga Bharat, indeed, Gandhi is our motivation, sir. Let me also acknowledge the efforts of Gandhi Smriti and Darshan Samashi, New Delhi, for guiding us throughout. I take this opportunity to thank the entire committee and the audience for representing their valuable views. Everyone present at this meeting is inspired by their highly sparkling words. I thank our conveners, Dr. Lata Naya and Dr. Preeti Kumar for their supervision and inspiration at every point of planning and execution of this fruitful session. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Chitra. With that, we have come to an end of this lovely session. Once again, let me thank each and every one here. Have a wonderful day ahead. Jay. Thank you, everyone. Very good uh, emceeing by all the students. Uh, so I think that is really good. So congratulations yes. to everyone. Thank you, Lata ma'am. Thank you, Priti ma'am yes. and everyone. Yes. So it was really wonderful. Uh, hearing all of you and also the esteemed speakers. Unfortunately, Professor Surin.